Real quick before we start this video, I want to let you guys know that I got a new microphone and throughout this video, anytime I say the letter P or the letter B, it was making a really loud popping noise and that's because I forgot to put a pop filter on it. So when you guys hear those in the video, please, please excuse it. I'm, I'm very, very sorry. I didn't realize that I needed, that's something I needed to do. It is a brand new microphone, very, very sensitive, very, very high quality and I just didn't realize that I needed to do that. So without any further ado, once again, I'm very sorry and let's get right into the video. Hello everyone, my name is Apple Guy, and welcome back to another Disney Summer video. In fact, this is the finale to Disney Summer 2019. So before this video gets started, I want to thank you all for making these videos do so, so amazing. I'm glad to see you guys have been enjoying them, and I look forward to doing more Disney Summer in the future. Today, we'll be talking about the top 5 things you must show someone when it's their first time at Disneyland. Now everyone goes to Disneyland for their first time, whether it be when they are very young, middle aged or very old. Everyone who's been to Disneyland has gone for the first time at some point. Now, obviously Disneyland is its own entity, its own beast that requires many, many days to look at it. But in this imaginary scenario, you have one day to show someone what Disneyland is, to try and make them want to come back on their own time. And what do you show them? Well, stay tuned to this video where I will cover five things that you must show someone when they're first entering Disneyland Park. Let's jump right into it. Number five on this list is something that a lot of people walk right by and don't understand the significance of, but I would say that Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln on Main Street is one of the key items that you must show someone when they're first walking into Disneyland. Why? Well, there are two main reasons. One is that it is very mechanically advanced, it is one of Disneyland's most advanced animatronics, and it allows the scene to be set for how these robots are going to be moving on the other attractions that you were to show them. Additionally, hearing robotic Abe Lincoln speak about keeping the union together and stuff is just really interesting. At least it is to me. I don't know if you might have a history buff as a friend or something, but I feel like a lot of people would really really benefit from hearing Mr. Lincoln do his whole spiel, talk about what he needs to talk about. Might not be something that you might see again and again and again, but at least for a first time trip, Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln is on my top 5 must do list. Number 4 on this list is to let them eat treats. Treats and Disneyland are so so amazing. They're items that you can't get other places in the world. Special mention to the churros, which you can find all over the park. Premium ice cream bars, which you can find all over the park as well. And then also Dole Whips. Even if they're not into pineapple or tropical fruits of any kind, I think a Dole Whip is still worth a try. They have a ton of new flavors now out in the uh, Enchanted Tiki Bar back behind the Tiki Room in the new expanded area of what used to be I think it was like Jasmine's Enchanted Garado or something. I don't remember what it used to be called, but they demoed it a little while ago and changed it to something new. It's a little extension of the Tiki Bar. So why are eating treats so important? Besides the fact that you can't get them other places in the world, it's what Disneyland was built on. Treats are required in order to keep you going throughout the day. Granted, some people bring their own, some people don't like the sugar or whatever. You gotta try it at least once, right? Even if you're not the biggest fan of sweet treats, I highly, highly recommend you let your person stop and eat some treats before continuing on your Disney day. Item number three on our list is you have to show them a fireworks show and a parade. Probably not in that order, most likely to be a parade and then a fireworks show. My favorite parades that I've seen are either the Paint the Night Parade or the Main Street Electrical Parade, but I don't think they do either of those anymore. I've heard good things about Sensational, and the Pixar Play Parade when I saw it was okay, but that was a couple of years ago, so I don't know if they still run that one either. Parades are neat because it is just a giant party, right? And that's what you're trying to convey in your short time at Disneyland with this person, is how much fun the park is. And having everyone get together on Main Street, and have everyone cheering and waving as these big parade floats go by, it really conveys some of the atmosphere of what Disneyland is, and some of the enjoyment that comes from just being there. Right? A lot of the nitty gritty of Disneyland and how you get the enjoyment out of the small things is just taking it all in. And I think the parades is sort of a, a big boost, a big instance of that energy that you will see all throughout the park. And maybe it'll be easier for them to notice some of the smaller things if they take in one of these large things. The fireworks spectacular works very similarly. Usually this is at the end of the Disneyland day, so you'll show them the fireworks and then you'll, you'll leave. As for firework shows that I can name from memory, I know the Believe in Holiday Magic one is really good. I usually watch that one about once a year when I'm in Disneyland or just afterward on YouTube. A lot of great technology there. I think the music and the overwhelming holiday theme is fantastic. But even if you're not at Disneyland during the holidays, 
there are still tons of amazing fireworks shows that you can show to someone in order to get them to experience some of the magic behind that as well. Number two is sort of a list in and of itself. It's some of the top rides that you must show someone when they're in Disneyland. I want to give special mention to Pirates of the Caribbean, my personal favorite ride. I believe that ride is 100% Disney magic, straight up. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That ride has all of the technology that you will see in a Disneyland park. It's very enjoyable to be on. There's some great music, great animatronics, great theming, great storyline. That's basically all you need for a fantastic Disney ride. And some rides specialize in others. Some rides do little less of one thing. I feel like Pirates of the Caribbean does everything 100% properly. Another ride to show them is the It's a Small World ride, recommended by my sister. She believes that this ride is a great example of how unity is important in the world. I talked about both these rides in my Top 10 Disneyland Dark Rides video though, so I'm not going to linger on too much about it. The third ride I'm going to talk about is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Now this is a, a thrill ride-ish, it's a roller coaster, and a lot of people aren't into that. But I think it's important to get a little bit of thrill ride there while you're in Disneyland to show them that it's not all this smaller dark ride stuff if that's not what they're into. If they're into the more action-packed attractions, maybe take them over to California Adventure, but if you're spending the day only in Disneyland, show them a roller coaster. Big Thunder Mountain is my personal favorite one. I believe it's good length, it's very smooth, it's not disorienting like Space Mountain is or rough like Matterhorn Mountain is, and it doesn't get you wet like Splash Mountain does. So I think it is the quintessential roller coaster experience when staying in Disneyland alone. Obviously, if you're going into California Adventure, you would show them California Screamin' slash the Incredicoaster, because that one's amazing. Side tangent here, but that is a really, really cool ride. It's very smooth, very fast. Okay, anyway, back to the main point. Gotta show them a couple of good rides. Those are just some examples. Obviously, there are many, many rides that could substitute any of those if they were to be closed or lines too long. The main goal of this theoretical scenario is you're gonna be showing someone the best that Disney has to offer. I think that's them, but of course if you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. My last item on the top 5 things that you have to show someone in Disneyland when it's their first time is the castle. And this comes with a smaller point of, take your time, right? Disneyland is not something meant to be shoved down and then you walk away. It's, it's a day, you're supposed to just enjoy it, take it slowly, look around, enjoy the atmosphere. I talked a little bit about this in number three with the fireworks and the parade, but Disneyland is meant to show off Disney magic, and that's what you have to show someone in order for them to want to come back. Listening to all the sounds of people having fun and hearing some of the ambiance makes us have fun because we just love to be happy, and seeing other people be happy makes us happy, unless you're weird. Obviously the castle is nothing that just immediately shoots someone with a ray of happiness, but looking at it, right, looking at the massive scale, looking at all the work that went in. Maybe if it's lit at nighttime, they get to admire the work. It's beautiful. And that's the kind of things you have to show people to make them want to come back. Show them how elegant things are. Show them how nice things are. And taking it slow is super, super important to all of that. If you're running around trying to throw them on a bunch of attractions, I think you're doing Disneyland wrong. I think you ought to reconsider maybe taking it slow. Disneyland isn't like other amusement parks where the rides are the amusement. I think the whole experience of Disneyland, the whole entity, is the amusement. That's why it's a theme park as opposed to an amusement park. Well, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe. Tell a friend about the Disney Simber videos that I have recorded if you think they would be interested. It means a lot to me. As I said at the start of the video, this is the last Disney Simber video for Disney Simber 2019. And I gotta say, this month went a lot better than I thought it would. I didn't think a lot of my audience would be interested in hearing me talk about Disneyland, but these videos did really, really well. And I eagerly look forward to doing more Disney videos in the future. That being said, I don't have any plans to return to Disneyland in the coming months, but I do hope to get back there again in December for another Disney December. So yeah, once again, thank you all so, so much for watching. It means a lot. I will see you guys in the next video, but until then, take care.